السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless every one of us And grant us goodness in the dunya and the akhirah Amin. My brothers and sisters, whenever there is something important, we need to prepare for it. This is not only when it comes to sports or when it comes to a rehearsal of an event that we are planning to host, but rather, more importantly, it is also when we have something religious, something connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something connected to our faith, that is absolutely important, we need to plan and prepare. For example, if you have a day of Eid, the day of Eid requires lots of planning, lots of preparation. You need to first plan uh, on the level of the masjid, for example, the timing of the salah, who will lead the salah, uh, how long it may, for example, last, what will happen at the masjid, the sound system, for example, the facility, how many people are expected to come. All this is part of preparation. Then, if we were to have the people who attend, they would also need to prepare. How am I going to go? Who's going to take me? What am I going to wear? When it comes to the day of Eid, what am I going to wear? What am I going to do for the rest of the day? And so on. Now, the best and the most spiritually elevated season is the season of fasting. And that is known as the month of Ramadan. Every time we hear Ramadan, even the non-Muslims know what we're talking about. They know that people become Muslims for that month who are already Muslims. What that means is they take their religion seriously for a month. Those who go to the nightclubs on the last day of Sha'ban, they tell their comrades, that you know what, you're not going to see me for a month, it's Ramadan. Come the day of Eid, unfortunately, you and I know what happens. Those who commit sin, they say, listen, it's the month of Ramadan, no more drinking. But my brothers and sisters, let's ask ourselves a serious question. Is it not that we achieve so much of spiritual elevation in Ramadan? We feel so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. We can feel the barakah and the blessings in the month of Ramadan. Do you know one of the reasons is because we have dedicated ourselves to Allah. We have dedicated ourselves to being proper Muslim. As a result of that, we achieve so much of calmness. We achieve contentment because we are now closer to Allah. We are fulfilling our salah. We are engaging in extra prayer at night. We abstain from that which is prohibited or that, would, that which would incur the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a result, you feel good. Ramadan, you know, the, the body feels good. The mind feels good. The, the, we all feel very good. People are generous. People are smiling and so on. That is the beauty of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I invite yourselves and myself to say from now, if we are to obey Allah, from now, if we are to dedicate ourselves to Allah, I promise you we will already start smelling the scent of this contentment and goodness. And more so beyond Ramadan, if we continue, I promise you we will taste the sweetness of that. Blessing and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala way beyond the month of Ramadan. This is why there are two important things for us to note. Number one is during this month of Sha'ban, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have fasted more than any other month besides Ramadan. So there is a narration that says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not fast any month outside of Ramadan more than he did during the month of Sha'ban. One might ask, why? Well, there are many reasons. But obviously, the prime reason would be to earn closeness to Allah. And if you gain closeness to Allah, what happens? If you gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically everything starts falling into place. You are content even when something, in inverted commas, bad happens to you. Why I say that is because in essence, for a believer, nothing bad actually happens. It's just a test from Allah. It's temporary. 
It's in this world for a little while you will be tested with pain, with hardship, with difficulty, with loss, with loss in terms of life, loss in terms of sustenance and wealth, loss in your business, perhaps a little bit of hunger, sickness and disease. All that is part of your test in the world. Every soul goes through that during their stint on earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So you become content because now you are plugging in with Allah. You start fasting during the month of Sha'ban. The Prophet ﷺ used to fast regularly every Monday and Thursday. Every Monday and Thursday. No one on earth debates this. It's a sunnah that was practiced by the Prophet ﷺ on most occasions. With us, I promise you, some of us, a lot of us, the majority of us, we haven't even done it once. I wouldn't like to embarrass myself and yourselves by asking you how many of you fast every Monday and Thursday. We probably would see two hands. How many of you have ever fasted because of the Monday fast and the Thursday fast that is unanimously a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I don't think we would see many hands. Now, the idea is not to show the hands, but the idea is to think within ourselves let me start. Let me do it once. Every month I will try once at least. Monday, Thursday. Okay. There is another bonus from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also earning the closeness to Allah. And when Allah is close to you, everything becomes easy. Your difficulty in your hardship, you find ease. Because you know Allah is close to you. You are close to Allah. When there is a hardship, you get up and you pray to Allah. You feel so good and calm. You feel relaxed even though you've just lost a lot of money. Even though you've just lost your job. Even though something disastrous has gone on in your life. But you are calm because you are close to Allah. He is your owner. We always say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We all belong to Allah. Who do we belong to? Allah. We all belong to Allah and unto Him is our ultimate return. People have already gone and returned to Allah. We are next in line. We are going to return to Allah, some early, some late. So it is not worth our while to spend our lives against the command of Allah when we have to go back to the same Allah. You see, when I have to return to Allah, what is the benefit for me? To transgress against the same Allah I'm going to return to. If you hear that on a certain road, on a certain highway, going to South Africa, for example, there are policemen trapping at this point 40 kilometers outside of Gweru. What will you do? When you get to 30 kilometers outside of Gweru, you slow down. Because why? I heard from someone that there are policemen at the 40 kilometer peg. Right? You pass the 40 kilometer peg, you see the policeman, you say, yes, I was told about it. Sometimes you won't see the policeman. So then you're going to phone your friend and say, listen, there was no one. He says, well, they were there this morning or they were there yesterday and they were trapping. What did you do? You heard from someone about a warning on the road. So you decided to believe them, although there was no revelation involved. They could be telling the truth. They could be telling a lie. And, and you slow down and you, nobody in their right frame of mind would knowingly go way beyond the speed limit. And they know that there are policemen right here. I don't think in any country in the world would they do that if they knew that there was a proper trap to try and trap the people as you know happens in this country. Now draw the example. We are on a highway right now in this world. We are getting to death. Death is part of the highway and there we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer to completely. Everything is going to be collected. And there is a messenger sent to you with revelation warning you that 40 kilometers outside of Gweru, there is a trap. This is just an example, okay? So you and I know that this issue, this problem, this difficulty, this hardship that we have in this world is all part and parcel of the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are told that we are going somewhere. What is the point of us breaking the rules knowing that a few kilometers down the road we are going to be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I want to give you another example. Ramadan is 40 kilometers away if you want to word it that way. Which means it is round the corner. Ramadan is around the corner. Now if we were 
to obey Allah from now, stay away from prohibition. It's like the five kilometers before. You see, I told you at 30, 35 kilometers, you already slowed down because you know at 40, there is something. From now, you start preparing. The Prophet ﷺ used to prepare. One of the ways was to fast more in the month of Sha'ban. And guess what? After the month of Ramadan, he didn't give up. He says, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and thereafter follows it through with six more fasts of Shawwal for them, all their previous sins will be forgiven. Man saama Ramadana thumma atba'ahu sittam min shawwal kana ka siyam al-dahr. Sorry, the, the hadith doesn't say all their sins will be forgiven, but the hadith says something even beyond. It says, the, it will be equivalent to having fasted the entire year. That's what the hadith says. It will be equivalent to having fasted the entire year. What is the aim and objective? There are many. Primarily the pleasure of Allah. But secondary is to dedicate yourself to say, Oh Allah, I fasted in the month of Ramadan. I'm not going to give up now that Eid has happened. Now that Eid has come, I'm not going to give up. Wallahi, a lot of us, the day of Eid spells the day of return to the sinful behavior we had before Ramadan. Let's be honest. Change that, my brothers and sisters. This is why we stagnate. This is why we remain in one position. We go backwards regarding our faith. Because before and after huge seasons such as Ramadan, we were disobeying Allah. That's not fair. So let's start from now. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ used to fast the three days of the month, every single month. He used to ensure the Islamic calendar, which a lot of us don't even follow except for Ramadan and Eid. Right? If I were to ask you, what's the Islamic date today? Okay, I think a lot of people might know because Ramadan is around the corner. Mashallah. But last month, who knew? I had none of us. Look, I might also be guilty here, but I'm just saying that this is how the world has become. We've given less importance to the Islamic months. We are supposed to be fasting 13th, 14th and 15th. If we do fast, we just ask the people, so when are we supposed to fast? They say, oh, it's the Wednesday, Thursday and Friday this month. So then you fast without even knowing in reality, is that actually the date? You just fasted. But we should be giving more importance to the Islamic date. Yesterday, someone asked me, what is your birthday? I told them why. They said, because I think you and I were born on the same day. So I told them, 18th of Jumadah Thani, 1395 Hijri. They said, what? What's that? I said, what do you mean, what's that? That's my birthday. Now, if you take a careful look at that answer, in actual fact, as a Muslim, that's the correct answer. But how many of us even know our birthdays? And then we say, you know, we ask a question, is it okay to celebrate birthdays? And then I ask, which one? Because you don't know which one are you referring to. Do you even know your birthday that you want to celebrate it? The answer is no. 90% or 95% of us don't know our birthdays. So what I'm trying to say is let's give importance to what Allah has given importance to. At least beyond knowing only the days of Eid. When we see the moon, it is a sunnah to see the moon every lunar month. And to go out and to search for it is an act of worship. Subhanallah. It's an act of worship. But what do we do? We only see the moon during uh, or when the Eid is coming or when Ramadan is coming. In fact, when Ramadan is entering, some might not even be interested. But when the Eid is coming, definitely. This is why when we were children and as we grew up, when you listen to other children, when they see the moon at any time of the year, they look at it and they say, hey, there's the moon. Tomorrow is Eid. Have you heard children say that? The reason is, according to them, you only look at the moon because of Eid. Now, as you grow up, it's not supposed to be the case. You look at the moon and you know this is the beginning of the Islamic month, mashallah. So that I can fast on the 13th, 14th and 15th. Going back to my original point. This was the run up to Ramadan and what they, calling, what they call it in, uh, in the gym. You know what they call it in the gym? They call it warm up. You warm up, run up to Ramadan. So before your main exercise, you have to do your stretches. You have to warm up a bit. You have to make sure you're okay. You know, you're about to read 20 raka'at, 20 units of salah, 40 units of salah, 60 units of salah, because you are going to be reading your sunnah and your nafil, inshallah. 
I'm not talking of the night prayer alone. I'm talking of the night prayer plus the other prayers during the day. Where when we read our Salat al Dhuhr, we're not just going to give up four units and that's it. We're going to make our Sunnah and our Nafil and we're going to increase with the Hajjud and so on. Because that is the month of Ramadan. Your reward is multiplied. So what I'm going to do, I need to warm up from now spiritually by increasing, number one, my fasts before Ramadan. Increase your fast. When it was the last day of Sha'ban, the Prophet ﷺ did not used to fast. Why? Because it would perhaps be known as Yawmu Shak sometimes. Yawmu Shak meaning if the moon has been seen, hasn't been seen, and some people say, okay, let's just fast to be on the safe side. In Islam, for Ramadan, there's nothing like being on the safe side. You either have seen the moon or you haven't seen the moon. The moon has either been sighted or it hasn't been sighted. You cannot say, okay, to be on the safe side, let me just read it. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So, the same would apply when it comes to the gym. Once you're done with all your exercise, guess what you need to do? Nowadays, they call it a warm down, if I'm not mistaken. I'm warming down. What is warming down? When I was a kid, I never knew what warming down meant. We just ran from A to Z, did all our physic, physical education. They used to call it PE, physical training PT. And we used to come and go, and that's it. After when the bell rings, you're back in the next class. Now they say, no, you finish five minutes before and you warm down, you do your stretches. And they are now teaching us that it's more important to do the warm down than the warm up at the beginning. So warm up, warm down. My brothers, my sisters, we understand this regarding physical training, sports. Warm up, warm down. What about Ramadan? It is far greater. It is spiritual. You are going to be standing in Taraweeh at least long units. Long units. It's not short. You don't want to be one of those who constantly looks at his watch. You know, I've seen people actually do it. They, they look at their watch and then they shake their head. Hey, in salah, shaking their head. Why? You haven't done a warm up and you're not interested in a warm down. That was you. Let that not happen. I've seen people do that, honestly. And I was shocked because, you know, now I'm an imam myself and we cannot read fast. The imam, we as musallis who read behind the imam, we need to encourage him to read quality, quality. Because that's the word of Allah. When you are weak, you say, hey, this imam doesn't know how to read because he finishes 10 minutes late. Everyone else finishes early. He will be 10 minutes earlier into Jannah. That's what will happen. You know why? Because he read properly, not even 10. He will be in Jannah way beyond those who want to rush. How can you rush the word of Allah? Ask those who speak the Arabic language. If they can understand what is being recited, you are reading the correct speed. If they cannot follow, then trust me, you are reading the wrong speed. The Quran is Arabiyyum Mubin. It is in clear Arabic. So if there is someone behind who speaks proper Arabic and he can follow the recitation, it means you are reading at a good speed. But if he cannot follow, that means what are you doing with the word of Allah? It is a message for people. And you are just whipping through it. The idea is never ever to complete the Quran. Did you know that? The idea was never ever to complete the entire Quran. No. Never. The idea is the quality. If the quality is there, then you may complete the entire Quran. If the quality is not there, trust me, you rather read from Alam Tara to the end. And you will achieve a bigger reward for quality than to go in for quantity. These are teachings of the month of Ramadan. Allah says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah has created death and life for the purpose of testing you who has better deeds. He didn't say who has more deeds. So I can't say, hey, I'm supposed to be in front of you because you know what? Uh, in Taraweeh I made 60 units, 60 raka'at. No! That's not going to be a better person. A better person is he who read what was quality. You know when someone gives you something, say you go to the shop, the, you pay for something, and uh, it's a box of chocolates, and they give you the one that's damaged and smashed, and, and you're going to say, no, 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 hang on, either give me my money back or get me a better box. But he says, look, I'll open the box and show you the chocolates are not touched. I'm not interested. The chocolates can be how they are. I want a box that is not tatty and it's there it's on the shelf right we do that with our deeds 
We have good deeds we are about to do, but the quality is not there. We want all those 20 chocolates, right? But now we don't mind anything. It's damaged, not damaged. But for the other chocolates that we're going to eat, we want a proper box. Make sure, Wallahi, when you are presenting your deeds to Allah, put it in a proper box. Pack it nicely. Be beautifully comfortable. When you say Allahu Akbar, forget about the whole dunya. Forget about everything that's going to happen outside. You know, in some of the masjids, mashallah, they distribute milk after every in the evening for those who come later on some people even have food it's not part and parcel of the taraweeh not at all but it's just in order to perhaps feed those who've come from a distance some communities don't even understand that for example because they, they say why are you giving food what's the what's the issue well we're giving food because people have come from far and wide and you know what they need to have something at least and we thought let them concentrate rather on the salah than on the food now, still there are people who say, hey, you better finish quickly because the milk is going to get cold or because the food is going to get swiped. I'm going to only be getting from the bottom of the, of the dish, you know. So if that's the case, what is the quality of the box that your chocolates are in? I tell you, it's damaged. It's damaged. Improve the box. Come Allahu Akbar, even if you've lost out, you know, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. So the idea of today's lecture is to prepare us for Ramadan and to tell us from now we need to start doing certain things. I want to tell you another way of improving. Two more things. Number one is when you read your salah now, we spoke about fasting, right? When you read your salah, take your time. Take your time. I promise you, you are packaging your deed in the best possible package. Best possible package. You know, when you order a burger from somewhere, I can give you these food examples because we are not yet in Ramadan, right? When you order a burger from somewhere, what is the main thing in the burger? Is it not the patty in the middle? Is it, you know, they say beef burger. So there's a beef patty. They say chicken burger. So there's a chicken patty, mutton. There's a mutton patty inside, right? Sometimes it's grilled. Sometimes it's not grilled. Sometimes it's made by perhaps mincing it, processed. And sometimes it's not. It's just sliced, a beautiful slice of steak in there. So that's the main thing in the burger. Everything else is by the way. By the way. But how they prepare it for you, they put, they get some nice fresh buns, bread. And then they slice it. They toast a little bit on the side so to avoid the crumbs and so on. They will put tomato sauce for those who like it. They will add mayonnaise. They put a bit of sauce. They add you the barbecue sauce. They put a lovely piece of lettuce, nice crunchy. They put a little, a few cucumbers. They put a, a nice piece of tomato. Some who like onions, they'll give you a beautiful slice of onion in there. They will add something else, a little bit of coleslaw. And they serve it to you while it looks so beautiful with a bit of nice deep fried chips on the side. Subhanallah. Why? The aim was just the patty. Have they ever taken the patty and thrown it at you? You want a burger? Yeah. They've never done it. They present it properly because for you to look at it, you must want to eat it when you look at it. You see, they show you pictures of the food in the restaurants because when you look at it, they, they want you to be attracted to it. Your brain processes the food before your stomach does. Do you know that? So they present it. Wallahi, I'm drawing a different example. When you give an ibadah to Allah, pack it properly. Through your salah, Allah wants the farad from you. Correct. I start off with the sunnah. I have a nafil. I take my time. All that is beautification. All that is beautification. If you are just going to rush through your salah, trust me, it's like throwing that patty to someone and say, have your burger. Allah doesn't want it. You need it. Take your time in salah. Take your time. When you say Allahu Akbar, beautify it. Honestly, read something good. People just read Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. One time and they're up. They go to the ground before the nose is on the ground, the whole head is already up. Don't do that. Take your time. My brothers and sisters, this is your akhirah. This is your jannah. This is how you will earn it. Go to sujood. Subhana rabbi al-a'la. Beautifully, three times minimum. And then increase it to five. What's wrong? Is it wrong to increase it to five? No, it's better. I love Allah so much. Spend a few more minutes with Him. Example of a haram relationship. You have someone you're not supposed to be talking to of the opposite sex. 
But you love to talk to them. If they want to put the phone down, no, 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 hang on, two more minutes. Why? It's haram. Shaitan is beautifying it. A haram relation, you, you know, you are prodded on to spend more time with someone haram. But Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, you cannot spend two more minutes with him. Taraweeh people complain, wallahi, every year there is an examination. There, is, there are records that go down every year. You know what the record is? The angels write down who is complaining about this salah. Written. And in the masjid, we are divided into groups. There are people who enjoyed the salah. It was 10 minutes longer than anywhere else. Because the imam was reading correctly with tajweed. He's worried about his akhirah. You know, the hadith says, يُقَالُ لِصَاحِبِ الْقُرْآنِ اِقْرَأْ وَارْتَقِي وَرَتِّلْ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَكَ عِنْدَ آخِرِ آيَةٍ تَقْرَأُهَا A person who has the Qur'an in his heart, he will be told on the Day of Judgment, read, and as you are reading, go up. Read in the same way that you used to read in the dunya. That's the catch. That's the catch. So if the imam used to come in and he used to zoom through his salah, in front of Allah, he will not be able to read in any other way. He will only be able to read how he read in the dunya. So be careful. You need to slow your imam down. Slow him down. Say, look, you know what? Today you read, we couldn't follow your words. If we can't follow your words, there is something wrong. Please slow down a bit. And go to the people, like what I'm doing today. I'm encouraging everyone. Every one of us needs to encourage the others. Brother, don't you think this is too fast? You might get someone says, what? It's so slow. Say, no brother, you are, this is for Allah. You know, it's not even in a haram relationship, we're ready to take time. This is the most legitimate relationship that will help you not only in the dunya, but even in the akhirah. So you need to make sure that the quality of your salah improves from today so that you enjoy taraweeh. You know, if you haven't done a warm-up and you enter into the rugby match, you probably will suffer, you know, some form of uh, muscular spasm and so on because you didn't warm up. Remember, it's a different example for Ramadan, but the Prophet ﷺ used to fast in Sha'ban a lot. He used to also, the, the salah and the quality of the salah, I don't even need to talk about because that was the Nabi of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the last thing I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. From now, I encourage yourselves and myself very, very strongly. From now, pick up the Qur'an every day. Preferably in the morning. It's good. And read at least one verse. How much? How much? At least one verse it will change your life I swear by Allah it will change your life every day how many minutes will that take you know on whatsapp we spend five hours no problem this will take five minutes and on the same phone that you have whatsapp you have downloaded the Quran already but you've never used it you ask the Muslims how many of you have downloaded the Quran in your phone everyone puts up their hand yeah I downloaded downloaded how many of you have read that downloaded Quran? Hey, there's only five people in the masjid here. Why? It will bear witness against you on the day of Qiyamah. Al Quranu hujjatul laka aw alayk. The Quran will bear witness for you or against you. This man downloaded me, never used me ever. It was just, and you know, there were so many in the, in the masjid and elsewhere and in the house, we never used. The Quran will help you to enter into Jannah. It's the word of Allah. It will bear witness for you. It has. Intercession, amazing, amazing. The Quran and your good deeds, they will intercede on your behalf. So develop a relationship with Allah through fasting, through reading more salah, and through your relationship with the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the best month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really make us from those who can benefit from this beautiful month. Perhaps next week you may hear a little bit more about this beautiful month of Ramadan and how we can prepare for it in other ways as well. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين. فاستغفروه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد